What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. I'm going to start this Pancast by unboxing and taking a first look at a Demeyer ProLine Atlantis frying pan. Never had a Demeyer before. Several people have asked me to review one of these pans. I kind of held off on getting one waiting for a sale. They never went on sale. So I just ordered one. It just came in. I've never used one before. We're going to open that up. We are going to talk a little bit about cleaning some burner rings on a fancy stove. I'm going to talk a little carbon steel, got some viewer feedback and more. Let's get started. All right, let's open up this Demeyer. People have been asking me to review one of these things and I told everybody I would get one and I started holding out for a sale started looking for them last fall and I thought, well, maybe Black Friday there'll be a sale. Turned out there was no sale. Thought, well, I'll wait till Christmas, there'll be a sale. There was no sale. Waited till President's Day, New Year's, no sales. So I ended up paying full price for this thing. Now, one justification for that is that we are in a period of hyperinflation and the price did not go up. So if I got the same price as I would have gotten five months ago in a period of hyperinflation, is that a good deal or not? I don't know. I paid about $300 for this thing. Don't tell the wife. Here it is. Made in Belgium. First thing I see is a hole in the box. Let's hope that's not bad. Whew. Holy cow, that is a heavy frying pan. First time I've ever held a Demeyer pan. This is the ProLine, the Atlantis, 12.6 inches, 32 centimeters. It's supposed to be seven ply. Seven ply. Good Lord, it is heavy. So my first impression, very heavy. And it seems like it's built like a tank. I've not cooked anything in it, obviously. And a review will be in the pipeline. Okay, let's talk about cleaning burner rings on a fancy stove. You guys may not know this, but I am a big chicken, big chicken. My burner rings had started getting some gunk on there. I tried to clean them. It just started building up. It was getting worse and worse. One of these fancy stoves, I wasn't sure exactly what they were made out of and, and or how to clean them. I was scared to use harsh cleaners on them. It got to the point where I just decided, well, I'm going to just throw these out and get some new ones. I was scared to use cleaners on them. I had seen some methods on the internet for using ammonia. I didn't know if that would damage the rings kept getting worse and worse and worse. And finally it dawned on me that if you're gonna throw them out anyway, you might as well go ahead and try the cleaners. So I saw a method on the internet where people take ammonia and take a burner ring and put it in a Ziploc bag, put a quarter cup or so of ammonia in there, seal it up, leave it overnight, and that's supposed to get some of that burnt on gunk off of there. So I tried it. And apparently you don't need to soak the, um, the burner rings. They don't have to be submersed in ammonia. And if you do this, I would recommend doing this in your garage with the garage door open. Those ammonia fumes can be pretty potent. But I tried it and look at this. So the internet method of using ammonia to clean stovetop burner rings actually work pretty well. Just make sure it's okay for the metal on your rings if you try it. And make sure when you use ammonia that you use it in a well-ventilated area and seal up your Ziploc bag so you're not overcome by ammonia fumes. Carbon steel question. Kathy Jenkins wrote in and she says she absolutely does not want any coatings on her pans. And she's asking about the Debouye Mineral B pans that we talk about a lot around here. She asks, is there some sort of mineral coating? No, there's no mineral coating. What that mineral B refers to 
is the beeswax that ships with the pans. You can get most of that off. You can remove all of it if you want to and build your seasoning up from there. Or you can leave a little bit of that beeswax on there and they say that helps jumpstart your seasoning. But it is not any type of chemical type mineral coating. Nothing like that on there. I gave this Debouillet carbon steel oval roasting pan a thumbs up. I also gave this stove enamel cast iron oval roasting pan a thumbs up. Nicholas Farrow wrote in and asked if he thinks the stove or the Debouillet will see more usage here in my kitchen. Well, this kind of all depends. If I had to absolutely choose one or the other amongst these pans, I would probably go with the stove. Now, both of these pans are at the tops of their respective categories, and there's a lot of overlap. You can do a lot of the same dishes in both of these oval roasters. Now, the Debouillé is great for things like roast, for meat, for uh, chicken. I think I showed in the review video chicken thighs on top of root veggies like potatoes, carrots, onions. Great for things like Brussels sprouts. You can also do all that stuff in this enameled cast iron roaster. Where this one kind of takes the lead though is in its ability to use acidic ingredients. In the review video for the stove oval roaster, I showed making that shepherd's pie. In my meat mixture, I used some tomato paste and some red wine. Would not have been able to do that in the Debouillé oval roaster. So if I could only have one, I would go with the stove just because it's a little more versatile. It can handle those acidic ingredients. Also came with a lid. I should note, however, though, it is significantly more expensive than the carbon steel. Well over $100 more for this than this. So price is a factor. That being said, though, I really do enjoy having both. Now let's do a little pan spotting. Ernesto's Santos wrote in with a nice tip. He said he found a good deal on an all-clad D5 frying pan at Home Goods. Home Goods, not normally a retailer I check. So I went to the Home Goods website and I typed in all clad. I'm gonna see if I could find a deal for myself. And it popped up a message that said, some of their retailers are shy and don't want the brand names advertised. You kind of have to go to the category and navigate around. And the way it works is you can kind of scroll through here. And if you see a pan that kind of looks like an all clad, you can click on it and then it reveals if it's an all clad or not. Now, what I think happens with Home Goods, and I'm not 100% sure about this, but they're under the same corporate umbrella with uh, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And I think they kind of get maybe it's overstock pans, maybe it's closeout models, maybe sometimes there may be a blemish or a scratch on a pan, but they occasionally have good deals on some high-end pans. I went through here and I found some lodges, I found some all clads, I actually found a couple of Moviels, so a little bit of French cookware in there, but it's one more place to check if you're poking around for a deal on a pan. YouTube Shorts. They're really pushing short format videos these days. If you don't know what a YouTube short video is, it's a video up to one minute in length. And a normal video like this one, I assume people are gonna watch them on a computer or TV screen. These are in 16 by nine format, kind of rectangular. These short videos are made for mobile platforms like cell phones, and they are in vertical format. So it's a different format and a different time length video. But YouTube is really pushing them. Most of my videos are more in depth. Some may say long winded, but I tend to talk about a frying pan, for example, for 20, 25 minutes. It doesn't really lend itself to a short video. However, there are some other products where this might work. So I'm gonna try a few short videos and see how it goes. For example, I just got this stove lid holder. Holds the lids from my stove cast iron Dutch oven. Something like that, I'm not gonna do a big 20 minute video on. There's just not enough information there, not much to talk about. But for a one minute video, something like that might work. So I'm gonna try a few and we'll do some mini reviews for products that kind of lend themselves to a short format and see how they go. Now, I don't know if you can really see the short videos on the desktop platform. 
you may need to access them from the mobile platform. I'm not sure exactly, but we'll do a little bit of a test. I'll put a few up and we'll see how it goes. Okay, that wraps it up for this edition of Uncle Scott's Pancast. Post your questions, comments, and feedback below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.